Anderson, huh, Grant? Right? Pretty good? Better than your, your buddy over there, right? Better than both of them. <laughs> All right. He's better than both of them. So, so let me ask you real quick, what, what, what's your standard of good? How do you measure yourself up to say it's good? In other words, if I have a, if I have a board and I'm trying to hang something on the wall or something, I've got to put a level on it because it tells me what's level, what's straight. How do you know what's good? Where, where do you get that standard from? Helping out people. Good works, right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. So, so, so Grant, my friend Grant here is going to take the good person test. So, Grant, have you ever told a lie? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, what do we call people? If I told you a lie, what would you, what would you call me? Uh, what do we call people that tell lies? Or a liar, right? So, number one, Grant's a liar. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, it's what you're telling me. Grant, have you ever, have you ever looked at somebody and been so angry and said, oh, I hate that guy, yeah. right? Your friends are already branding you out, man. Okay, Jesus says, Jesus says, if you have hated in your heart, he says you've already committed murder. Did you know that? Okay. Let me ask you this. Have you ever, have you ever um, taken anything that wasn't yours? Have you ever stolen anything, regardless of the value? Well, yes or no? Yes or no? Just, you tell me. Don't worry about them. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So what do we call people who steal things? Thief. thief. A thief, right? Unless you're in Pittsburgh and you're a stealer. So you're a thief, right? <laughs> so he's a thief. So so we're, we're, we're working here. Let me ask you, Grant, have you always done what your mom and dad have asked you to do? Right? The first time with a respectful attitude. Because that's obedience. Learn what you're told, when you're told, the first time with a respectful attitude. So, so the Bible says in the fifth commandment, the, the first of the commandments, it says, first of the horizontal commandments with our community, it says to honor your mother and father. Have you always honored your mother and father? Yeah. No, yes. well, you, he can't say yes. He always said he was a liar, right? <laughs> so, okay. So, so let me ask you this. Have you ever used God's name as a four-letter curse word? Right? So that's called blasphemy. God says, don't take my name in vain. So, so just, just with those commandments right now, this is Grant standing before God. God's standard of good is the Ten Commandments. So according to your own admission, now I'm not accusing you, okay? I don't want to be accused of being a hateful guy. I'm not accusing you. I'm just saying what you've admitted to me, by your own definition, by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blaspheming, non-mom and dad honoring person. So if those are the charges, and we're not even all the way, if you haven't guessed, I'm using the Ten Commandments. So we're not even all the way through when you're already in big trouble. Would you agree with that? Okay. So if you stood before God right now, and those are his standards, what should God do to you, heaven or hell? You don't know? Let me ask you this, Grant. Let's say, um, let, let, let's say, uh, let's make it real for a minute. You got any brothers or sisters? Okay. So let's say, let's say you, you come home, Grant, you're out with your buddies over here. What's their names? Noah, Jacob, and Evan, and Addison. Noah, Jacob, and Evan, and Addison. Okay, let's, let's, say, let's say you all are playing, you guys play basketball, you got a warrior shirt on. So let's say you're down on the court shooting hoop, and let's say a guy comes down, and he is just, he pulls out a gun and a knife, and he just kills all five of your friends, all right? You tackle him, right? You look like a pretty big dude. You tackle him. They call the police. They get him. There's no doubt he's guilty. The blood is there. The bodies are there. They see all that. And he goes before the judge. And he stands before the judge here at the magistrate, uh, Wood County Magistrate. And it, he says, he looks at the judge. Now, if he looked at the judge, what do you think that judge should do with him? Guilty or innocent? Right? So should he let him go or punish him? Punish him. Now, that's just a human judge and a human laws. You just admitted that you had done all those things against an infinite God, against the creator of the universe. So let me ask you again, what should God do with you, heaven or hell? Hell. Well, that's the right answer. That's what he should do. Because God is a just God, right? However, Grant, God is also love. He's also love. And do you know how God is both love and just at the same time? He does forgive, but not just it's not just a random forgive. It's not just we do what we want and he just gives us he just forgives for no reason. There's conditions with this, because we are finite people, right? Would you agree that we're all going to die one day? Right? And God's infinite. Eric, get that for me, please. So so what how does God show his mercy and his love, justice and his love at the same time? Do you know? Do you know? Is it Jacob? Right, which one's Jacob? Jacob. Do you know Jacob? How does God show his love and justice at the same time? Right here. You guys have heard the story, right? About sin and Jesus Christ, right? That's why we had the cross, Grant. So what happens is, God, we're all sinners. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Paul, because we're all hard-headed, especially we're guys, right? We're really hard-headed. I'm a hard-headed guy. My wife's got to tell me stuff 20 times, and I still forget it. We're hard-headed. Paul says in Romans 3.10, None are good. He says, No, not one. So let me ask you, so, so, so how can we, how can we, can you, get, can you get to heaven on your own works then? If you're, if you're guilty? Could that criminal say to the judge, well, judge, I know I just killed five guys in the basketball court, but I fed the hungry, I clothed the poor, I helped an old lady across the street. Would that get him out of trouble? No. So then would you agree with me that your good works can't get you out of trouble? Well, God, would you agree with that statement? That your good works, your good works can't, can't get you out of trouble, can they? No. So see, that's an honest thing. He's, he's, he's getting it, right? So the way, friend, nothing you can do, nothing I can do. Here's how we do it, though. 2,000 years ago, this is the gospel, I'm telling you, it's called good news. 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus Christ. It's his son, okay? You've heard that there's all kinds of religions out there, right? Now listen, there's only two religions. There's the religion of human achievement and the religion of divine accomplishment. Here's the difference. Human achievement are the religions like Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Catholicism, and all those that teach you you can earn your way, right? You do something and God does something else. Christianity, God comes down, sends his son, fully God, fully man, and on the cross, Jesus lives a perfect life. On the cross, Jesus takes God's wrath. So, 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 so Grant, this is how you get into heaven, friend. Jesus says in his first sermon, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. He says, now repent and believe in the gospel. That's what he says. To repent means to turn from your sins. You know how if you're going down the basketball court and you're going and, and you take the ball away from somebody, they're coming this way, what do you do? You turn, you're going the other way, right? That's repentance. You turn away from your sin. You turn towards God and you believe God what he says. And on the cross, the Bible says that he who knew no sin, that's Jesus, became sin so that we may become the righteousness of God. So what that means, friend, is that Jesus took your sin. God looked down at Jesus and he saw Grant's sin and he laid it on his son and he pours out his wrath. He crushed his son. So you don't have to be crushed, Grant. He poured out his wrath on Jesus. And Jesus is the only one that could absorb it, right? Completely. If you want to think about it this way, Jesus drank your hell. If you want to think of it that way. And when he turned the cup over, there wasn't one drop of God's wrath left for you. In exchange for that, Jesus' righteousness can be laid over top of you, Grant. So when God sees you, when you take your last breath, if you turn to Christ in repentance and faith, and you believe in Him and what He says He's done, that He'll look at you and He won't see you for the sinner you are. He'll see Christ's righteousness over top of you. And Christ is perfect. And so when you take your last breath, God welcomes you in, not by your own works, but because of Christ, because of His work. And, and, and so, so when Jesus says on the cross, do you guys, anybody know what the last three words were Jesus said on the cross? The last three words Jesus said on the cross. Does anybody know? He says, it is finished. What was finished? What are we talking about, Grant? Your sin debt. Your sin debt was finished. Grant's sin debt. Jacob's sin debt. Addison's sin debt. All your sin debt for those who will turn and trust in Christ. See, everybody doesn't go to heaven. Many people that are walking around this park, you guys just missed it. Some guy came by and gave me the finger and said some nasty things. Many people will reject this free gift of salvation. Listen, we're not here to make fun of people or to beat people down or be mean. We're here to tell you a message of love that God has a plan to save you and it's only through His Son, Jesus Christ. So on the cross, He says it is finished and God goes into the grave, right? And what happened three days later? You know this. He rose from the dead. You know why that's so good? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, Grant, it says that he defeated, that, that showed that Jesus defeated sin, Jesus defeated death, and Jesus defeated hell forever. And then, listen, here's the other thing I want you guys to get. You, have you ever heard the frame, we're all God's children? Don't believe that. If you open up 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, it says there's children of God and children of the devil. What it means to be an adopted child, an adopted son or daughter of Jesus, it means he adopted you, right, from somewhere else. If you were adopted, that means you came from somewhere else. And that's what he does. And when you get adopted, Grant, if you would humble yourself and you would turn to Christ and repent in faith, all that is yours. You can have victory over sin, death, and hell forever. And you can know that when you take your last breath, you can have eternity with God rather than eternal condemnation. Because when we all die, the Bible says it's appointed a man to die once, then comes judgment. And then you will hear the greatest thing or the worst thing you could ever hear. You'll either hear, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness, I never knew you. Or you'll hear, welcome, my good and faithful servant, as God welcomes you into heaven. And that's why we're out here. That's what we want for all you guys. Does that sound like good news? Is that something you'll think about tonight, maybe?
Yeah? What about you guys? Something you'll think about? Does it make sense? Right? And it's, here's the thing, people that, that, that come against Christianity, I had a question. What's so wrong? What's so bad about not lying to somebody, right? What's so bad about not stealing from somebody? What's so bad about not murdering? You see, that's what, you ever heard the phrase, we're all made in God's image? You ever heard that? You know what that means? It doesn't mean that God's a good-looking guy with a nice warrior shirt and some cool kicks on. That's not what it means. What it means when it says we're made in God's image, that's a moral statement. That means you have a conscience, right? So, so, so you know it's wrong to lie because God's not a liar. God's put his moral thumbprint on every one of you. So you know it's wrong to lie because God's not a liar. You know it's wrong to steal, right? Because God's not a thief. You know it's wrong to kill because God's not a murderer. And on and on and on and on. So you get those things. That's what it means to be made in the image of God. And so that's why it's so bad when people reject Christ. And they reject the free gift of salvation. Because God's made it possible through the cross. So, so that's how he does it. His love and his justice meet at the cross. He's just. His wrath is satisfied. He pours it out. And he shows his love by substituting his son for those who would turn and repent in faith. The Bible says that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Isn't that good news? But that comes with a caveat. God knows if you're coming because you want to get out of hell free card, right? Or if you're truly broken over your sin because you know you have no hope outside of Christ. So that's that's the good news of the gospel. You guys got any questions? Any questions, Grant? Any Bible questions? I appreciate you talking to me, man. Thank you so much. Give Grant a hand. Come on, give him a hand. He's a big guy. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. If you guys got any questions, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to uh, meet with you and uh, share the, the gospel. We have free Bibles. If you got, you guys need, you need a Bible? Any of you guys need a Bible? I got free Bibles. I don't want anything for them. You got one? You got free? Anybody else need a Bible? You need one? Hey, Eric, will you get him? Get uh, Let me see. Don't tell me. Uh, Jacob, right? Yeah, will you get Jacob a Bible, Eric? I can do it. Can you do that for me? Let's stick a gospel track in there, please. Of course. Sir, thank you. You need one? Anyway, um, so there's a tract in there with the gospel message, right? If you guys have any questions, our, our information's on there. Just send us a message say, hey, I'm the good-looking dude in the Warriors jersey that I saw you at the park. I got a question or whatever. All right? Amen. Thank God bless you. God bless you, Grant. Thank you for coming. Here you go, bud.